Quite the offseason at LSU. The boys have been on the field practicing football, and we will get to see them in the annual spring game. Coming up this Saturday, we got Alon Philip Sullivan on the line from LSU Odyssey to help us preview what we're going to see coming up this weekend. Lon, how are we doing? Feeling born again, Mark. How are you doing, brother? I am doing just fine. Appreciate you stopping by, as always. And uh, let's get started on this thing. So, of course, the spring game is a big deal because people can actually watch the game in person and on television. So maybe a little bit m too much is made out of it because there are other scrimmages that are just as significant to the coaches to evaluate the players. You know, there's, there, it's just as valid, but there aren't TV cameras. There is pretty much the difference. So LSU has had a number of scrimmages. Uh, the, the most recent was last weekend. So what are the most outstanding articles from those scrimmages that stand out to you to, to learn more about this football team? Well, I, I are you meaning specifically players, uh, positions? Uh, yeah. What stands out the most? Well, I mean, Mark, you got to begin with this absolutely improved LSU defense. I, I mean, this defense could go from 124th in the nation to 4th. I truly believe that they have this. I mean, Jake Peets, DJ Mangus are bringing in a pretty sophisticated offense. Uh, Durante Jones had no clue what Peets was coming at him with, and uh, Jones was completely prepared in, in a lot of those scrimmages. Um, I didn't get as much footage as I did last year of these scrimmages, but I got enough to get a good picture of what Jones is kind of throwing at him. And a lot of two linebackers, a lot of three – you know, a lot of three, four at random times, a lot of four, three. Like, he's just mixing up a ton of it. Like, zone coverages as well. LSU never plays zone, especially, you know, in the secondary. And uh, that's what they were doing. That's what they were doing uh, the last uh, scrimmage. There's a lot of experimentation going on from Durante Jones, trying to figure out his players' limitations, um, what he can do with certain guys. And, you know, some of the biggest guys who stood out – throughout spring and throughout the scrimmages, Mark. I mean, Derek Stingley Jr., he's shown a ton of leadership. I mean, that's that's come from Coach Orgeron and a, and a few other sources saying that, you know, Derek has been very vocal for once. He's a very quiet guy, you know, and for once he's kind of been vocal and in your face. Um, he's had three interceptions as well, um, I believe it was, or, or two, multiple picks um, in, throughout scrimmage. Great sign from Stingley. He almost had another one, his father said, during the last scrimmage, had had both hands on it, um, but you know, you can't you can't mention this defense without talking about the defensive line. Um, that's the number one defensive line in America. Um, I've been saying it for for quite some time. Just looking at that 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 defensive line on paper, it was like that's that's the number one defensive line in America. But watching them take advantage of that talent is what makes it uh, empirically fantastic. Uh, Mason Smith. What he's providing up the middle, Joseph Evans, what he's providing through the interior, um, it's it's absolutely fascinating. Then you got Jaqueline and Roy in behind them. And I, I imagine Jaqueline and Roy and Mason Smith could be the starters. But, you know, the name you're hearing right now is the best defensive lineman on the team is Joseph Evans, uh, a former center who arrived to the team as a center. Uh, he's taking those, those line of scrimmage skills to the other side of the ball. He's gone to kind of back and forth, um, like another guy, Devontae Lee, I'll, I'll, I'll bring up a, in, a, in a bit here. But Joseph Evans, he's been, he's been name-checked by Coach Ordron a ton as, as the best defensive line, uh, defensive lineman on LSU's team. And if, you, if Joseph Evans is the best, and B.J. Ojolari, Ali Gay, uh, Jaquela Noy, Mason Smith, uh, <sighs> Landon Jackson, Savion Jones, Bryce Links. If all those guys aren't, but Joseph Evans is, just imagine, Mark. Just imagine the festival, the feast of madness going on on that on that defensive line. But Mark, you know, uh, spring is about improvement, and uh, linebackers, you know. <laughs> Linebackers were really just just god awful last year, and and we we wrote a, extensively about what they were failing at with the four three uh, last year.
but and we've done we've done some of that again this year but we kind of focused on turning the page because we believe in Blake Baker and he's given us every reason to believe uh coach Orgeron says he wears cleats to practice uh running around uh looking like Kenny Powers out there Mark this guy he's you know Damone Clark described him as the coolest coach he's ever had so this guy's got swag he's got pedigree um, you know, it didn't work out for him at Miami. A lot of Miami fans were laughing at some of the tweets of uh, Coach Orgeron saying, you know, he's a great recruiter, things like that. It's it's all turned out to be true. Um, you know, Blake Baker is even being used out of position for a few guys. He, he's recruiting a Denver Harris cornerback with, with Corey Raymond in Houston because, you know, he, Blake Baker's a Houston native. And then you got him recruiting Shamar Stewart, defensive end, 2022 class, Five-star powerhouse, absolutely. Powerhouse brick house, this dude. Uh, he's recruiting him in Miami because uh, that's that's his old stomping grounds from just a little bit ago. So he was already recruiting Sh Shamar Stewart. So, you know, this guy is a defensive coordinator. He, he, he was an ex-defensive coordinator. So you're putting him at linebacker. And he's in his element. And I've seen immediate improvement. It hasn't been perfect. But, it, but that's not the point about spring. I'm just seeing a lot of energy. And they're, you know, just flying into the ball. They're attacking the ball, Mark. And guys like Josh White are sticking out. He, he was banged up for a bit, but he's, he's come back and uh, he, he's gotten rid of that gold jersey, switched back to the, to the purple. And he, he had a hell of a, a final scrimmage. Uh, I'll tell you what, he, he walloped some people. Bug Strong, that guy, he'll make you pay the price. That guy's vicious. Uh, he, he's, I, he, I think he's LSU's London Fletcher this year, Mark. He's just, he, I trust me, if, if you can see any pictures, any footage of Bug Strong, you, London Fletcher, LSU's London Fletcher fits the bill. Um, every LSU fan should be excited with that linebacker core led by Damone Clark. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of hungry, hardy guys. But, um, you know, this defense, Mark, is just, is just unbelievable. I'm taking everything, Lon, that you've got for me here. The one thing I will say is you're going to rile some people up in Clemson, in particular, other places uh, across the country, but Clemson in particular, when you call LSU's defensive front the best in the country. Well, they can they can scream, they can kick, they can cry all they want, but Andre Carter and his, his company, they're going to drag them all the way to hell and back. This defensive line, they're going to take over college football, Mark. This, this is a... <laughs> This is a beast of every opposition's burden, my man. These guys, they will take you to town. I mean, Ali Gay, B.J. Ojolari off the edge, and that that might not even be the starting defensive ends. I mean, we haven't even talked about Savion Jones. Landon Jackson is just barely coming back. This, I mean, this this is a unit that is beyond elite, and now they're coached by an NFL guy with 25 years combined experience a guy that bill belichick had to have twice he had to have andre carter twice not just once he had to have him come back twice because of that defensive line was so struggling he needed a guy he could trust who could show the new guys how to do it andre carter is that coach i've seen absolute uh, brutal practice footage where he just stops everything and just no again i didn't see anything like that in 2020 even with uh you know social distancing going on you can still be vocal you can still be intense uh covid was no excuse for like a, a less intense practice i i you know i get the restrictions at the first but once it came to late summer the practices were pretty much full go um there was no excuses there was just a total lack of energy last year this year it is just they they're, they're just all riled up they're flying around the coaching staff um so that's very infectious for the players so coaches are bringing new energy, and it sounds like um, it's going to be fairly unpredictable for opposing offenses to see, to, to scheme against this defense. They're going to be all over the place. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. More unpredictable, um, more unpredictable than Michael Scott running your company. Uh, this, this is... Uh, this this defensive line, Mark. I'm just I'm really excited. You got to see them. I just I cannot wait for this the spring game because everyone will be able to delight in this defensive line. And it's just the beginning. Uh, I hope uh, everyone remains healthy because there's a variety of options that just a lot of different things that uh, Andre Carter, 
Coach Orgeron, who's very involved in the D-line. A lot of things they can do. And they hired a new analyst, Carson Hall from Georgia. Um, he was a part of that 2018 uh, national champion runner-up team that played in that epic Rose Bowl game against Oklahoma. We hired him on to, to kind of try to attempt to replace uh, Christian Locator as the uh, graduate assistant. I should say graduate assistant, not analyst. Uh, and Carson Hall's immediately brought in a ton of just ass-kicking energy. 